it is a crossroads of voices, noises, gestures, looks. There is a confusion of colors, aromas and tastes. In Africa, the market is a meeting place for selling and buying and weaving relationships. It is a factor of commerce, but above all, of persons. As in all African markets, even the market Dantokpa of Cotonou, the economic heart of Benin, is an essentially feminine place. The women transport the products, prepare the stalls and manage the negotiations. For the Beninese, the market is of great importance. At the market, the first encounter of two persons who plan to marry can occur. At the market, even if the women are not able to sell the merchandise they have brought, they can share news and give advice. The market is the point of contact between tradition and modernity. There one can find merchandise that comes from every corner of the globe. However, they believe their ancestors indicated the place where the market is located. It is a place of peace where no one armed may enter. But today, the market is also the theater of a dramatic reality, the exploitation and trafficking of minors. 14,000 children work in the Dantokpa market as ambulance street vendors, or more often to transport merchandise or collect trash. At the market, many little girls are sold as domestic workers. This is what happened to Rufin. I was six years old when my father came to the village to find me. I was very happy there. I cultivated the fields with my grandmother. I thought I was in heaven because I never wanted to live in the city at Cotonou. I worked the fields like the other village girls. One day, early in the morning, my father came to my grandmother telling her that he had come to find his daughter to bring her to her aunt in Cotonou, where she would be able to study. I do not have aunts, I only have uncles. I said that I wanted to see my mother again before leaving. At that point, my heart began beating rapidly. My life was over. I would never again see my family. My father had told me that I did not have a mother. I answered that I had known a woman who had breastfed me every morning from since I was little, since I knew the sun and the moon. There was a woman waiting for Rufin in the city. When we arrived, she welcomed us beautifully. But after a few minutes, I saw her giving money to my father. He told me that he was going to pay some debts and that he would come back for me. Ten minutes later, the woman told me to change my clothes and begin domestic work. I told her, I did not come here for that. I came to go to school. She answered me that she had bought me with the money I had seen her give my father. Now I was her house cleaner, and she could do with me whatever she wished. I hated my father. I detested him. If someone had asked me to kill him at that moment, I would have done it. They call it Vidomegon, which in the Fon language means a little girl given to someone. According to a traditional practice established in the rural zones of West Africa, many families choose to entrust their children to a guardian to guarantee the conditions for a better life and to have access to instruction. However, from the 80s, with the progressive impoverishment of the families, 
this tradition lost its essence of solidarity and has degenerated into child trafficking. Girls who are sold into forced labor without pay. The market was the master key to restart and offer them a new opportunity. This was the idea of the daughters of Mary Help of Christians, the Silesian sisters of St. John Bosco. In 2001, we began here, right in this parking lot, where many little girls pass by every day. They are ambulant vendors. We built this shed, and on it is written, Vido Megon. The girls pass here, and we invite them to stop a moment. We listen to them and learn their situation. Sometimes they stop and rest. There is a group learning to read. In the afternoon, there are various activities, collage, sewing, hygiene. You want to be a seamstress? I will speak with your parents. We can help you a little from your parents and a little from us. Half and half, okay? One morning, some years ago, Rufin's story was interwoven with that of Sister Maria Antonietta. She was the first child I met when I arrived here in 2001. She was selling corn and beans on the street. The sister gave me some chocolate. I was used to showing my guardian all that I received. She took it and threw it away. I went to look for it and I ate it. Then she whipped me. She looked at me and the other children said, she doesn't understand, she's a video magon. Two weeks later, the sister brought me some clothes because I was almost naked. My guardian burned them saying that I would never use them. This hurt me. Little by little, we became friends, and she told me of her desire to go to school. Here is where her adventure begins. We brought her to the foyer, but they kidnapped her again. Finally, we were able to take her back. The first stage was foyer Laura Vicuña. This is the big family home the Daughters of Mary Help of Christians created in Zogbo a zone of Cotonou. Every year it houses about 400 girls from 6 to 17 years of age who have been removed from trafficking by the juvenile police or who have been approached by the sisters themselves or by the social educators who work with them. Arrival at the family home marks the beginning of a journey for these girls. There they can find warmth they have never imagined. After the first welcome, they wait to be reinserted in the family of origin. They may remain at the foyer as residents and follow literacy courses, go to school, or learn a trade, like tailoring or hairdressing. They can also participate in activities of gardening, cooking, or preparing soap, so that they will have one more ability when they return to their village. The more motivated girls participate in the foyer plan of excellence. The aim is to accompany them as they pursue their studies. Rufine is among them. Her dream is to be an obstetrician. My life changed from the moment I arrived at the foyer of excellence. It is not only because of the opportunity for higher studies, but also because of the will to reacquire her own dignity and to relaunch her future. Yeah. 
j'ai dû demander à Dieu. I had to ask God to forgive my father, to leave the past behind in order to begin again from the start. From that day on, I began to speak to my father once again, and I spent the Christmas holidays with him. Yesterday I went to see him. I am very proud. I could never have imagined that I would feel this way, because I have found my father, my grandmother, my father's new wife in good health, as well as my little brothers and sisters who were happy to see me. On the way back, Rufine thinks of her family with nostalgia, but she is happy to be among her companions. Not all the girls can study full time because they are occupied in domestic work. We have formed part time study plans for them, as at the Alternative School of St. Joseph. Thanks to this, Martin and 130 other girls can continue to help their families while learning new things. These girls have accepted a courageous challenge. After knowing solitude, misery, humiliation, they have decided to give a new horizon to their life. Elizabeth had been sold as a house cleaner in two different families. Then she escaped and arrived at the foyer. She learned to be a tailor and now works in a professional workshop. Today I am proud of myself because I have learned something. I love my work. What if the market itself became the point of departure for change? This is what the Silesian sisters and their collaborators were thinking. They were committed to an extremely important activity of awareness and of prevention that could start in the most degraded zones of the Dantokpa market. It had ironically been renamed the Beautiful Star because many people had made their roof under the stars. At night, entire families camp out on beds of refuse under the open skies. The paradox is that they even have to pay rent for this unsanitary encampment. It is to these people that the Silesian Sisters Project House of Hope is addressed. Here the girls, who usually sleep on the street, can count on a refuge and decent hygienic conditions before starting their day of work at the market. Those who wish may also participate in the workshop activities of pastry making, bread baking and cosmetics. In order to sell these products, there is a boutique and even a restaurant. We seek to give formation and knowledge of Italian cooking based on our cooking, so that they can gradually find a dignified job. This is what I wish for them.
For the women who work at the market, we have become projects of formation on juvenile rights, health, hygiene, and a fund for microcredit, thanks to which they can send their children to school and remove them from the spiral of trafficking. The youngest ones pass the day with the animators of the nursery schools provided within the market. The radio is the most important means of communication in Africa. Thus, it is not by chance that there is a transmitter within the heart of Dan Tokpa market. Radio Tokpa has the crucial role of sensitizing the public and giving a voice to the story of so many girls. We transmit only programs promoting purely social activities that help the population to learn new things, aid them with health topics and instruction. We have a program called Contact Transmissions, where we speak of situations in which children are abused. The children come to our studios to submit their problems and the difficulties they meet, because sometimes they are tired of submitting to all this from their guardians. In fact, for the young people who leave their villages, the city is often a mirage. In order to counteract the exodus from the country, a school was built in the lake village of Weidou. We are present in this village on account of the children, because we find many children at the market who come from here and sleep on the lake shore. We have built places where the girls come to study preliminary courses that will lead to their insertion into the public schools. Now we are going to another rural zone at Takong. Here there is a farmhouse of the Val Ponasca where 10 girls at a time can live for three months. They learn to cultivate the fields and to raise chickens and rabbits. Thanks to a microcredit project, they can invest in production and thus continue this farming activity in their villages, growing food for the family and to sell at the market. Everything began at the market, and now we return there. The dreams and the efforts of the Silesian sisters go in this direction, to restore the market to its traditional value, so that it may become once again a place of encounter, and not one of unequal relationships, of dignified work, and not of exploitation. We want it to become a place that allows children and girls to grow, and to become women who are fully aware of their value.